Do you have one of those, uh, like, I swear, one day if you were to warn him one more, you better tell him that I'm not afraid to say this, but I will. Wow. Uh, it's cool. It's cool. I only see him for like an hour. This T plus four. All right. Ah. Okay, so now you screw it up. Y plus one. All right, hold it. Now you can't start doing anything until I tell you what. The range. The range for T. Second. Ten one. Yeah. So I'm going to review real quick for anybody you missed out. You missed out on my wonderful story about the connection between H two O and ice cream. All right. Water. 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 Right. Don't forget who gives you a grade. So let's say T goes from, let's say, yeah, negative four up to up to two. Sure. I make this take all day. So on one level, you start plugging stuff in. You might realize that you have to be a little more, give a little more resolution. So you might want to have to plug more points in. But you just start off with the, the major ones. You know, I would just start off with negative four, negative three, negative two. I'd start off with those. And if it's not enough, if I don't really see where it's going, I can just fill in some halfway points. And figure those out. Right. So at negative four, what's the x piece? Two. What's the y piece? No C shit. Fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> negative two. Two negative two. Sure. Three. Check me on that. No. Huh? Three. Three. Oh, for why? Oh, sorry. God. I said three, four, one, and I'm like, what? Oh, three for why? Uh, negative one, oh, rad three, three is like 1.7 something, so that's like point three almost. Yeah, And then for the y? Zero. Zero. Zero, that's negative one. So normally what I do, to tell you honestly, is I don't, I just kind of do x and then do y. So like I would just go on y is zero here and then three there. Plug a zero in here, you get zero. Plug like a one in. Five, two minus root five. Yeah. Oh, is this right? Yeah. <coughs> two what minus root five, whatever that is. Negative. That's going to be negative something. Negative three. Wait, three, 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 Two minus root six. Uh, yeah, two minus root six. Thank you. Which is roughly. Negative point six. Yeah, let's just say negative point six. <laughs> Probably not, but what the hell. Uh, and then you just graph this. Now, now when you go to graph this, do you suddenly need three dimensions? No. No, because we're, what's the T dimension? The T dimension is weird. Because it's like everywhere. Right. Can't so you so they, just think of T as time, like two, four, at a certain point in time? Totally. Point two. So T is behind the scenes. But then again, you want to look up, just Google what is time and have fun with that. Okay. Right. So just saying it's time just kind of displaces the weirdness of it. Let's call it some other weird shit. Um, so here I just plot these x, y points, right? So let's see. X only has to go up to 2. Y, I've got to get up to 15. So let's say 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Right. So even if you missed the other day, this is all this is. If you're able to graph, if you're not able to graph, you should not be here at the moment. <laughs> Right. If you're able to graph, 10 1 is easy. I mean, so there's, there, it's easy, period, for everybody here. Why do you to graph? I said, does that mean? Aw, that doesn't mean you know what the hell you're doing. So, so 
be careful what I say. So you leave the calculator here. The calculator goes to the next level. <laughs> That's why I used to tell my students, if you do your work on the calculator, it passes on, you stay here. Uh, 2, 15. Let's see, 1, 8. Point six three zero. you see what I'm doing now? So T creates this, but then I plot those. So T is the behind the scenes, dude. Right. Conspiracy theory kind of thing going on. Point six three. Point three zero. Zero negative one. <coughs> Bless you. Uh, and then the stuff I'm not really that sure about. Negative point three zero and negative point six. Pretty sure. So it looks like it's trying to be sort of parabolic, right? And my scale's probably sucky, but oh, well, too bad. I think it might be trying to be parabolic, I don't know. The Big Dipper. Yeah? So at the end point, do you put an arrow or just stop it? What do you think? Arrow implies what? Yeah, but what do we know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't put errors at the ends because that implies the domain is larger than it really is. That's what I was going to ask. Uh, I had a homework that was like 0 to pi over 2, which would only be like the one, one quadrant. Uh, so that's no, that's not the case. Now, remember, t is behind the scenes. I don't know what the outputs of these are going to be. Does that make sense? Okay. So t goes from negative 4 to 2, but my x's went from negative 1 to 2, and my y's went from negative 0.6 to 15. So it all depends on what these functions are. So that, that limit doesn't pertain to the graph? That limit does not have to do a okay. damn thing with the way your graph looks, okay. right? Because it totally depends on what the function, the function is 18 billion times t, and my t goes from 0 to 1. Yeah. Holy shit, it's going to go from 0 to 18 billion. Yeah. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. It depends on what the functions themselves are, what their outputs are. Cool. I like it. really not that much more to this. But the more interesting you make these functions, the more interesting your pictures get. And you can make them really, really freaky. I don't know if anybody Googled the butterfly curve. Awesome. Did you, and you saw that kick-ass equation. Did you try to plug that equation in? Those of you who are telling me the truth? Yeah, he really did. Oh, you did? It really long. Aw. I like it. And it's just neat to watch it go. you got to make the T range really large so it's able to get through all of its uh, rotations. It's really cool. All right. All right. So anything from 10.1? You guys try to do some of the homework yet? Yeah. So the second part of this is to just put it into the Cartesian equation, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see if we can do this. How would I eliminate this parameter? I would do that. Yeah, he's got to be the other one. Why would I do it? Because if I try to solve this for t, I got to bring a plus or minus. I don't want to. I don't want to bring a plus or minus. You put a radical in. A radical. Well, now, yeah, now I can just do uh, rad t plus four equals two minus x. Is that cool? So then t equals 2 minus x squared minus 4. Right? We did about five steps in two there, but we could all do that. Freak out. Yeah. All I'm doing is starting here. Switch those. Bam, bam. Squared both sides. Subtracted 4. Bam. So now that I know t is this, I can plug it in there. So y equals 2 minus x squared minus 4 squared minus 1. That's the rectangular coordinate system version of this, right? So it comes out being like a x to the fourth with some other stuff in there. So it kind of makes sense that it came out to be like that. It doesn't matter if you want to get rid of the t, it doesn't matter which one you isolate, right? If it's x or y. It doesn't matter, but you normally isolate the one that's easier or the one you don't have to take roots okay. of, yeah. Yeah. So what's the point of doing that? I don't know. <laughs> can you always now, now listen, you can you can always attempt you can't always do this easily. And sometimes it seems like it's impossible, but you just gotta do some really weird shit to get rid of T. So these are relatively simple equations in there, right? The minute I start putting trig functions in there, and then you start looking for identities that connect them. 
try to, to, to get rid of the TV. But, but real quick, uh, the reason I want to do this is to see what does it look like in non-parametric form. Is it something that I need a parameter for? No, not really. I wouldn't need a parameter for this. I could actually handle this equation pretty well, right? So, but if I have to, if I solve for t and I try to get it, and I get something like x squared minus e to the y x plus four equals y, can you solve that for y? Can I solve this for y? No. So I probably would rather use parametric equations to do that, right? They're equivalent, yeah, yeah. And the only, of course, I'd have to think about what this guy's domain and range are, but I can pretty much see them from what we've graphed, right? Cool. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yes? My question is, does this parabola matter if it opens up or down? I'm just for example, if it opens up or down, does it matter if it's up or down? Like, you, you end up with y equals, but if it's sides left to right, you end up with x equals? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's funny, if part A is graph it and part B is solve, uh, get rid of T, I know ahead of time if my part A looks like this, I'm not going to get Y as a function of X. I'm going to get, it looks like I'm going to get X as a function of Y. But if my parametric equation looks like this, all right, I'm going to get some weird mixture of X and Y that's impossible to solve for either one. Because neither one is a function of the other one there, right? So what I really want you to understand is the beauty, beautiful thing about t is, I mean, is that a function? Parametric. There you go. That's the beauty. For a parametric uh, defined equation, this is a function. This is a function of t. But this is not a function. This is not y as a function of x. This is not x as a function of y. This is both of those suckers as a function of t, which might make the calculus have to do easier, which might make other things easier. So that's why we... That's why we create different coordinate systems. Or this is not even a different coordinate system, truly. You could argue it is, like there's a T axis, but there really isn't. But it's different, like a polar. We're going to talk about polar coordinates today. That's a completely different coordinate system. You take that to 3D, and then you got cylindrical coordinate system. Or you got spherical coordinate system, which you will talk about and do calculus in, in Calc 3, if anybody has to take Calc 3. So actually, awesome. so it actually matters that you solve it. Solve for x or y, depending on the graph. Well, the, the question is, and I didn't make a conscious choice about what it, to do here. It just happened to come out. Why does it make sense that it came out? Why is a function of x? Why does it make sense? Because it looks like y is a function of x, right? But I didn't choose. I just did the way that made sense. I don't have to go in knowing anything. I just do what I can do. And then I go, oh, how about that? That's interesting. But I didn't have to know it before I started doing this, right? You guys see what I'm saying? I just picked the easiest route to get T by itself. If you happen to solve for Y, would it matter? Because you will have you end up with a plus minus, and then you'll have to choose to do Yeah, you really minus. don't want to bring, you can, but you just normally don't. There's no point to it. Um, oh my god. Holy shit. I'm sorry. Is she making a point well enough? I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. All right. You ready? I asked my pre calc students this morning to do this. I'm going to find out later how they did the demon test. Uh, one of the problems was uh, eliminate the parameter. And they had to graph this also. But hopefully, you understand, you guys should realize graphing that's relatively easy. It said it was from negative pi to pi. So you just make a table, ooh, plot the points, connect them. Real quick, I want to make sure everybody understands, you've got to connect the points in the order in which they're created, right? I think I said that last time. In fact, you could even tell me the direction of motion. They were created in this order, right? So that would be the motion of this thing, this meteorite or a rocket ship or person running on a field, right? Whatever this is. Um, so... If you did make an XY table, TXY table for this, you have to, when you plot the points, you know that they're going to be kind of zigzagging all over the place. And if a student just plots them, they'll just go, oh, it's a certain one. Really, maybe it's supposed to be this. You know, you got to connect them as you make them. Cool? You do with me on that? Good. Be careful. I'll just plot all your points and go, okay. <laughs> they're not even numbered. It's not a connected dots thing. One to two. Shit. That's not a bad idea. You can even number them as you go if you want to. Uh, whatever. Um, but how do I eliminate the parameter? 
How do I kill T? Uh, go for X or Y. For X. Friend T for X. This is my friend. Good. I love it. And you actually don't even solve for T. I want you to realize. You just solve for sine T. You can write it like that. And, and how do I rewrite X? What sucks about X's definition compared to this definition? They're not referring to the same angle, right? So very often they're a problem, especially when I have things that are trying to work together, I want them talking about the same angle if I'm trying to do more direct algebraic manipulation on them. So how do I make X talk about the same angle? Good. Four sine T cosine T. What's sine T? Y minus 2, yeah. What's cosine t? You should probably find out. How do you find out? Why did I write this shit like that? Not a big deal. Should not be the oh no moment. Sine is the final. Where's y minus 2 go? Opposite. Oh, sure. So I could tell a cult. <laughs> it's alright, I'm tolerant of that. Religion? Sorry, I wasn't doctor. Yeah, you were. In that case, your teacher was. He took you down the dark side. And, uh, side of so, what happens here? I need that for cosine, right? Yeah. Uh, 1 minus y minus 2 squared. So, I get y squared minus, minus 4y four four. plus 4, and then 1 minus that, so I'll get. Uh, what did I get? Negative 3, so I get, uh, everything's negative, holy oh, shit, negative 3 minus y squared minus 4y. So what do you think about that? That's interesting. It's fine. <laughs> There's values of this that'll work. Could be. <coughs> right? Is anybody worried about that? No. Good, you shouldn't be. I like it. Oh, I can make that a plus. That might make it better. There you go. Why would that be? Because the negative goes through. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Y squared oh, wait, no, minus 4 plus 3. No. Because it would be a plus 3. Yeah. If it was plus 3, that would be. Well, no. No, no. Actually, yeah, you could. But don't. So the only point I'm trying to make here is how, how you use trig identities to help you kill T. This is a very subversive way to kill T. Right? I didn't directly kill it, I just kind of replaced it. Yeah. Um, okay. So I want to finish up, I want to get into section 10.2. 10.2 is that last half of that handout. Or last two thirds of the handout. So, I mean, the beautiful thing, you just got to love this. I mean, that's, that's what it is. That's, that's almost too awesome to believe. Because y is a function of t, so you just take its derivative with respect to t, and you put that over the yes. derivative x function with respect to t. That's, that's stupid awesome. But, let me see if you guys can do this. I, I didn't put it down here. It is in the book. How would you do this? Oh, it's uh, dy dt times dx, right? Over. Well, sort of. Uh, uh, yeah, be careful. D by dx has to come first because it's an operator. It doesn't make any sense being empty. So this is d by dx dy dx. You guys with me? I like it. What the hell is that? And what's dy dx? dy dt over dx dt. Cool.
What's that? Oh, yeah. Those XSATs are confusing. Oh, yeah. Well, shit. <laughs> well, they have this on page... Uh, at the bottom of page 645. <laughs> so what do you think I could do from there? dt dy dt over dx dt believe it or not <coughs> plus that's what it comes from yeah so it's d squared y over dt squared over dx dt so it's not second derivative of the top second derivative of the bottom second derivative of the top first, first derivative of the bottom yeah i don't understand how we got all right, so right here, you guys are with me right there, right? Are you guys with me right there? Yes. All right, cool. Um, let me see. Not directly. The one in the box is dx dt, and it looks like it turned into d, dt. Or, uh, I'm sorry. The one in the box that looks at D D X and after that looks like it turns into D D T. Is that still an X or T? Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah, this is a T. That's a T. That's a T. How? All right. So that's what we're about to talk about. Okay. 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 So uh, on the bottom of page six forty five, uh, they got the little thing there. That's and they just say it real quick. Um, let me see if I can remember. Can you put it on the computer? What's that? Can you put it on the computer? Can I do what now? Put it in the projector. Let me see if I can fill in the blanks. Well, it should be just, yeah, it should be just this. That's what that's defined to be. I was hoping it would come to me as I was working through it, but no. Um, but that's the, I don't think that comes up too often in the homework. And if it does, you can just use that definition. But I need to figure out what that connection is. I can't remember. Oh, I'm being really stupid. All right. Let's go back a step. Okay. Watch this, watch this. Here it is. I knew I thought about this earlier. I just forgot all about it. So what does d by dx do to something? That's the connection. What does d by dx do to something? Because that's, that's the operator operating on y, right? It does this. It does d by dt of that thing, right? Over dx dt. All right, that's what it does. So what does d by dx do to dy dt. I'm just going to put that where y is. So the point there is uh, like uh, matrices themselves are operators. Uh, and this is like you were saying earlier, Chris, you have to be careful because you don't want to put an operator at the end. It can't be empty. The operator has to have something that it's operating on. So this operator does this. That's what it does. 
So if I operate on something that's already a derivative, it's just going to put that right in the spot of what where what it does to something, right? So what does it do to y? It does this. So what's it do to anything I put in there? The same thing. That's what the operator is defined to do. Let's try again. Uh, what does this say that this does to y? What is this? What does this do to y? It does this to y. I love your face. Uh, all right, are you cool with this? Is everybody cool with that? <laughs> all right. If you're cool with that, then you know what d by dx does to something. It does this. So what's dm dt? I'm sorry, dm dx. It'd be dm dt over dx dt, right? All right, cool. So what's, so d, anything dx is d, that thing dt. So what's d by dx of this? d, that dt over dx dt. Cool. It's trying to be a t. Still no? Still no? Yeah. Okay. Your D is starting with the yellow ones. Alright. That's why I miss the days of everybody having a textbook. Because then you can just look at the computer generated letters, right? My letters are not quite as pretty as computer generated ones. I understand that. But too damn bad. So what does D by DX do to Y? It does this. So what does d by dx do to anything I put in there? It does this. So what if it happens to be dy dx that I'm looking at? It does this. Yes? dx has to be in the denominator. dx has to be in the denominator. Y yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only operator I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's happening? Okay. So it's dx dx of y equals all of that. So we put all of that into the second. So so I'm sorry. I'm lost. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. All right. Real example. That's the last time. I hate conceptual. Last time. All right. Let's do this. Uh, here's the first thing on the wall hand up. Right. So tell me what dy dx is for that. One over two. Hold up. All right. It's like the first day of class. What the hell? Give people a chance. Try to do it. That's the first problem in the little handout, in the little derivative section. Plenty of time. What's the derivative of y expected to be? Yeah. I like the confidence that was stated. If you're going to be wrong, just go all in. I like that. 2t plus 3. 2t plus 3. Now, I want to make a, a better connection between 
what we just did, what that means about the actual function that's defined parametrically, right? So that's why I like uh, the second dude. Um, if you have your calculator, calculator, yeah, right? Drink some water and use your calculator. Uh, graph number two in your calculator. Your your uh, range for t doesn't matter all that much. Make it, <coughs> hello. You. Make your your range for t just make it negative ten to ten. So make your x min, let's zoom in just a little bit, make this like negative 2 to 10, and make your y, let's say negative 5 to 5. Let me see if I put these in right. 2t squared plus 1. Uh, oh, minus t. That's my bad. Alright, team in team max, negative 10 to 10, x min x max, negative 2 to 10, y min y max, negative 5 to 5. How are we doing? Uh, is anybody in the boat where when you hit y equals you don't get y, x of t and y of t? Is everybody cool with how to make it do that? Does everybody have a uh, parametric? Yeah. What's up? Okay, here's the window again. Just go ahead. T, it just doesn't matter. I just got to get enough. So negative 10 to 10 is fine for T. Negative 2 to 10 for X. Negative 5 to 5 for Y. So everybody should have this picture now. I like it. Right. A little fish, yeah. Cool. And the fish's tail actually goes to infinity. Oh, I got it. Yeah. So, you know, fish is everywhere at one time. There you go. Um, I got it. It's more like a squid, actually. So, what do you think, where do you think the slope is, the tangent line would be horizontal? The top or the bottom of the fish, right? The belly of the fish? It's the belly of the beast. And the top of the fish, right? You with me? Yeah. And if we zoom in a little more, let's go ahead and do that. Let's make this fish fat. Oh, yeah. That's eating a few people. Uh, zoom in a little bit. Negative 2 to 2 on the Y. Let's see what that does for us. There we go. Exactly. I like it. Alpha. Alpha fish for sure. Big ass. Infinite tail fish. So the horizontal tangent line, the tangent uh, point should be about right here, right? It looks like about three or so. Where would it be a vertical tangent line? Where would the slope be undefined? And the nose of the fish. I like it. around here somewhere. 
you played the calculator, you're having a little trouble there, but it should be straight up and down there. Because it's got to turn there, so at some point it's got to be straight up and down. So how do you think I do that by hand? How do you think I calculate that by hand? The same way you always did. <laughs> Grab calculator with both hands. Uh, yeah, so if I said do it with a calculator, would you have to hit it with your head or something? <laughs> okay. Do it with a calculator. Wait, you can write the answer with your calculator. Can't use your hands. Mine has tons of speed. Right? The, the, the cook it up to your brain. Um, I mean, this is not a big deal. How did you do it in calculus to find, for a regularly defined function, how do you find where the tangent line would be horizontal? Find the derivative Take the derivative set equal to zero, right? So let's see, what's this guy's derivative? Uh, oh, that's a T there, that's my bad. T squared minus 1. I think it's just the word number. Is that cool? So dy dt is t squared minus 1. What's dx dt? 4t. 4t. So what makes this thing 0? T equals? One. That answer makes me cry a little bit. Well, two there, it's okay. <laughs> now that's not good enough. That's not good enough. That's T. I want a location on this picture. I want a location on the fish, right? You plug it into the equations, right? What's the what's the point for T equal negative one? What would the point be? If T is negative one, what point am I at? Which is good, because that's where it looked like to us where it was going to be, right? So 3, just plug a negative 1 in, right? So what do you get when you plug a negative 1 in here? Negative 2 thirds. What if T is 1? 3? Wait, no. If, 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 it's, if it's negative 1, then it's negative 5 thirds. No, no, well, you've got to be careful. All right, all right. Let's do this carefully. This would be negative 1 third. Minus negative one, so negative one third plus, plus one, one is positive two thirds. Oh, this will be negative, negative two thirds. It's because this is minus t, so if t is negative or positive, it changes. I like it. So that it matches up with what we guessed looking at the picture, right? It's at three. And now that I've got the derivative staring me in the face, can you very quickly tell me what t value makes it vertical? Zero. Zero, yeah. You want the derivative to be undefined, so I make the bottom zero. So 4t equals zero, t is zero. What point is that? One. One. Zero. Zero, which would be the nose of the beast, right? Now, how do you use your calculator to actually find those points? Or to confirm that. Not to find the points, but just to look at the points, look at the derivatives of the points, go to second trace to get the calc and now if you're in the right mode if you're in parametric mode you get these options too bad for you there's no integral option it's going to be doing that in a minute so if i want to know just what dy dx is and i want to know and now i can i can control this using t so if i put t equal to negative one there it is it's at this point it didn't tell me what the point is it's too bad for me but what is it trying to tell me? You guys should be used to this poor little calculator that only has so much computing power. This is trying to tell me that it's... Do you guys know what that's trying to tell me? It's trying to tell me it's zero. Yeah, it's times 10 to the negative 8. That's yeah. as well as it could resolve it. Good. I like How it. How did you get there? I can't remember. Second, Second trace. Second trace. And then dy, dx. dy, dx. If you want either one of these separately, you could do that too. And then you just hit enter from there. Yeah, negative one. yeah, enter, and then you have to tell it where you want to be. So if I want to be at t equal to zero, it tells me that. Now if you do uh, value and you put a zero in, it'll tell me what point that is. That's kind of nice. It's amazing. That's a nice connection between the work you do and what it means visually. It means the same thing it's always meant visually, which is good to know. So if you have something that's turning this, like doing this, how many places will it be undefined, a uh, vertical tangent line? 
if it keeps going like that, an infinite number of times, right? All at, at, at the sides here, there's going to be infinite. There's going to be a undefined tangent line slopes, right? Yeah. All right. Cool. I like it. Not too bad. So let's talk about integration. Then the integral of this just be zero. How do you mean? The integral of what? Of the fish. Is it symmetric on the x-axis? Well, it depends on how I define my boundaries, right? Yeah. It could say the top half of the fish. You know, it could say the true area of the fish. So you'd have to integrate two separate integrals. Do you remember that when you had one area that was below? But I wanted the true area, so you have to separate them. No. You don't remember that? Does it make sense that I have to do that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, So the crazy thing about integration, so if I want to know the area under f of x from a to b, I would just do integral uh, y dx, right, from a to b. So now, not surprisingly, all we do is uh, y now is a function of t. You see me call these the same things I did. What I call y. Good. X is a function of t. So what's dx? Uh, yeah, f prime. <laughs> Does this feel like this is feeling like uh, substitution? It, it totally is. I'm substituting the x and y with their definitions in terms of t. Right? So I am doing a substitution uh, for this integration. And what about A and B? A and B were what X did. So now it's just going to be alpha and beta is going to be what T does. So we just call it alpha and beta. But this makes it sound like it's going to be really hard, but no, it's going to be really, really nice. So now it's going to be integral alpha to beta. Uh, y was G of T. Uh, DX is F prime. Oh, that's alpha. Okay. That's the little version of that. Yeah. Uh, alpha, beta, they were what used for a lot of angles, right? Alpha and beta is normally what they're used for. Beta is just B with a tail. Yeah. Beta is B that's starting to melt. <laughs> right? Well, however you want to look at it. Okay. So let's do this example. I like this example because it's, it's gross looking. So, so if I graph this thing, uh, I get a sense of what this really means. But what between the x-axis and this curve? So, what does that normally mean? I want to find out. So, for example, if I had a parabola and I said find the area between that parabola and the curve uh, and the x-axis, what would you need to find first? The zeros. Yeah, you want to figure out what the limits are going to be. So, you want to know what where are the points define where it starts to be above the x-axis, right? So how would I do that with this? I mean, very specifically, you're finding where what is what? X is zero. zero. No, you're not. X equals zero would be y-intercepts. Y equals zero. Oh, y equals zero, right? Be careful, aren't you going to attack the wrong thing up there and get some really funky shit? So I want y to be zero. And this is why I want to make y zero. I want to figure out where my limits are for my interval. And this is why this definition, it doesn't mean you have to figure out a way to convert these. 
It just means that integrals in parametric form look like this, where alpha and beta are determined by what t does. Well, I'm going to determine what t does directly. I don't have to convert a to alpha or some shit like that, right? You know, melt it a little bit or elongate it or no, 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 just look at it. Just get t. So how do I figure out where this equals zero? Uh, no way. That's insane. Can you pull it two out right away? Oh, kick ass. I can divide everything by negative two, for example, right? Just cut that away. So I'll get t squared plus four. Or minus six. six. Plus two. Plus two. Minus three. Minus three. At least. I didn't know this is a team teaching. T minus T plus three. T minus two minus. T plus three. T minus one. No, three and one don't multiply with two. T minus two. T minus one. T minus two. T minus one. So T equals one and two. That's right. At least you're trying. There's other people just like waiting for something. I don't want to think about it. Yep. Oh, there you go. She's just offering that herself up as that person. Somebody else is going to do it. It's anyway. So between 1 and 2, it's above the x-axis, so I can integrate. So I know those are going to be my limits. Um, what else do I want to say about this? Well, I just need a flight. So now I can start to throw stuff into this form. So integral from 1 to 2. You have to be a little careful. Uh, it all depends on which direction it's going. Let me say this again. I don't know if it's from 1 to 2 or 2 to 1. So if you look in the book, the book actually does make a point about that. I don't know which way these limits should be. So to investigate that, I would have to kind of, uh, I'd have to graph this out. But in general, what I do is I just pick away, and if it comes out negative, well, it must have been the other way. I mean, it's that simple, right? right. The interval from A to B, how's it relate to the interval of, from B to A? Everything else is this is the negative, right? So in purely practical terms, if I don't have to graph it, all I need is the integral, I'm going to get the integral. Right? Now, when you get into polar curves, you almost have to graph it to figure out what's happening with things. Um, and then when you get into math 281, you're going to have to graph some stuff to figure out what the limits are doing. Um, but what do I throw in here? Yeah, I want the y piece, right? So I really, I could just use this. this I don't, this is the idea, but I put y in there, and then I put the derivative of x in there. That's the idea. So I, I really just do the same thing that we always do. Integral of y with respect to x. Integral of y with respect to x. What's dx? What's dx? <laughs> yeah, okay. 3 over t, dt. Don't tell me natural log is also mean, Jeff, put a natural log. What? Don't tell me that shit. All right, finish it out. I'm tired. Finish it So 
down with you guys, you get it? Fucked up? Let's <laughs> get okay, integral 18 minus 12 over t minus 6t, right? Once you bring the 3 over t through. So then you get 18t minus 12 ln t minus 3t squared. Officially, this should be absolute value, but I know my inputs are positive, so screw that. I just want to say a little word there. Wait. I pulled out the 6, though. What's happening? What happened? I, I, I took out the common denominator, uh, the six. Common denominator? What happened? I don't know. I pulled out a six. How did you pull out a six from four and two? No, on the bottom. 18 minus 12, so 18 minus 16. Oh, okay. Sure. So then you'll get t squared over two there, yeah. which will still be three t squared. Yeah, you'll get 2 ln t, which becomes 12. Yeah, it yeah. should be the same no matter which way you do it. And then when you plug those in, I end up with the exact answer for this, I think, is this. Actually, I know what's right because you checked it in the calculator. And then yeah. you get 0. 0.68, 2, 2, 3, 4, blah, blah, blah. I think I rounded off that camera. How do you check this in the calculator? Because like I just said, does the calculator have an integral option for a parametric? No. no, it doesn't. Shit. That was the $180 version. Right. Wolfram Alpha, cool, it'll do it for you. All right. But you have your evil teacher that says do it by hand, which means not touching a calculator. Right. <laughs> use your head. If I say use your head, then you're like, I'm back to this now, Chuck. <laughs> um, come on now. If you had, if you had a, a function, I don't even care, if you had a function 3x minus 4x squared, and you want to know what the integral is from 7 to 11, how can you do this in the calculator? Excellent first step. So in y1, you would put this, and then what would you do? Second calc, right? Integral. So when you're in rectangular coordinate system, you have the option of integration, right? You guys know this. Go back to funk, bring back to funk. So I got, ooh, I got a yummy thing there. So if I'm going to integrate that from whatever to whatever, second so calc, inter, integrate, number seven. So I can integrate from pi to two pi, why not? There, right? So, how do I check my work for the integral of this thing? How would I check my work? Make it into a rectangular coordinate equation. I like it. Make it into x, y. Kill the parameter t, right? How do you kill the parameter t? Solve for y. Solve for x. Yeah. All right, yeah. Y would so desperately suck. Can't really solve for t well there. I'd have to use quadratic formula in some really weird way. So x, how do I solve for t? Uh, one Subtract right. one, divide, divide, divide by three, and, the and e then e, to the e, it. e it. E it. E to the x minus one over three. There's going to be some I like it. And, and, and what do I do with that? So you integrate it into y? No. no. you plug it into, shoot, you plug it into y. Yeah, I need y equals to be able to put it into the calculator, right? So y equals 6 times t minus 4 minus 2 times t squared. So I just put that into y1. Then you integrate it. <laughs> just take it with me. I want you to just take it with me here. Come on. And how, what would I integrate it from 2? Not 1 to 2. We know t equals 1 and t equals 2 are the points in like parametric plug form. Plug in 1 and 2 for t and then find what? Where? Y. Y. What am I integrating with respect to? Y. 
So yeah. my limits are going to be determined by what my x is doing, right? My y, I, once I plug them in, I know what that is. It's zero. That's where we got it from. You know, like zero to zero? No, no, x is controlling everything, right? So this is completely doable if you wanted to. Or if somebody asked you to do it. It might happen to you, considering where you are. Like a mean person, an evil teacher. All right. Yeah, we take a class on how to be mean. I ace that thing. Um, all right, is that, is that decently understood? I mean, the last bit was just me trying to explain to you how to check what we just did. It's always good to know how to do that. I didn't have a TI calculator. <laughs> Way back when, when I was but a wee lad taking this math, we didn't have those things that came out after that. We, there's no way for me to check those things. Yeah. All we had was water. <laughs> we had to find that with a divining rod. It was horrible. All right. So last thing I want to talk about today. And, and again, I mean, uh, now, now relative to some of the stuff we've done in this class, Section 10.2 should be awesome, right? This is derivatives. This is relatively simple graphs, right? I mean, that, 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 don't let that be a big problem. I don't not do the homework because you're like, that's oh, going to be easy. Uh, <laughs> bad idea. Uh, oh, one thing I want to talk about. Uh, I, I can't remember if I assigned any homework, but this is a relatively simple idea. It's kind of cool. If you have some curve in space, defined by x of t and y of t. It's actually kind of cool. In Math 281, you do some nifty stuff called line integration and stuff. You've got like 3D shit going on. So this is not quite that, but this is sort of going in that direction. Uh, what I want to do is figure out how long this is. And that's not an easy question, is it? Because it's not straight. And in fact, it's not even defined rectangularly, right? It's not even x, y. It's in terms of t, which actually makes it easier to do. So I've got this curve that could be some ugly, disgusting y and x equation, and I want to find out how long it is. Well, if I put in parametric, it's actually relatively easy to figure out how long it is. Um, so if I kind of zoom in, let's see. Um, I'm going to overstate what's going on here a little bit. Well, it's, it's going to be easier, probably here. So if I make this little triangle here, between those two points. Somebody help me out here. So if I look at this point here, whatever that point is, this would be the change in what? Y. With respect to what's controlling everything? T. T. Because Y doesn't depend on X directly in this, in my interpretation here, right? Y depends on T. So that's how much Y is going to change with respect to T. And at the same time, X is changing a little bit with respect to T. Are you with me? So here's what I'm trying to approximate. Now, obviously, D by DT, that kind of stuff, should be really small. I've got to make it a little bit bigger. It's still too small, I think, for in the back of the room. But you understand this is happening infinitesimally small. So what I'm going to do is, whatever the result we get, I'm going to integrate it over the whole thing. Are you with me? So we'll say this starts at uh, t equals zero and it goes to, uh, well actually this is called as alpha and beta. Right. The, the melting clocks of letters. Right. Um, can somebody tell me, let me blow this thing up now, let me make this bigger. So we call it, we get, this is dy dt, this is dx dt. How long is this? What kind of triangle must that be? Right. You don't know about the triangle. Don't limit its option. Yeah, it's a right triangle. Right? So, and of course it has to be because it's dy dx. They have to be perpendicular. Right? We're not suddenly in some non Euclidean geometry. Uh, how long is this? Uh, and actually, it's not even how long it is, but it's kind of nice how you can still use the same formulas. How quickly is that side changing? And this sounds like related rates, but it's not as bad. I don't want to bring back any bad memories. Remember related rates? Yeah. All right, stop thinking about it. <laughs> I, I, they're awesome. They're yummy. They're what science lives on. But I understand why college students hate that when you hit it, because it's like, bam. 
Um, but how long is that? What do I use to figure out how long that is? Uh, no. The second derivative? No! Pythagorean theorem. Are you just playing with me? What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know, I feel like you can get the second derivative out of there somehow, because you're squaring them. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, but... But no. That's a good point you bring up. This, this makes it look like I've squared something, right? Yeah. But I'm operating on it twice. That's very different. So this notation kind of sucks because it makes me feel like I've multiplied by something twice or something, so that's why I think it's a square, when really it just means I've operated this many times with this. Uh, and you're, every now and again the idea of operators comes up. I don't know if it's ever been said in an earlier math class. Has anybody ever said the word operator to you nope. in this way? All right, not an operator. Um, this is an emergency. Okay. Um, so operators, you deal a lot more with them when you get into courses like differential equations. You definitely deal with them in there. Um, oh, where else? A little bit uh, in discrete, I think, a little bit, uh, sort of. But anyway, um, enough of that. So is everybody cool with this here? Yeah. That is the how quickly this is changing. And isn't that, if I take it down to the infinitesimal level it should be at, isn't that that little increment of change in the length? And, and this is true, and I don't care where I drew this stupid little triangle, it's true everywhere. So if I just add up all those increments of length, which means taking the integral. integral. So if I integrate, yes, from alpha to beta, that would be the length of that curve. So there's a really quick example of this curve could have a truly disgusting x, y definition, right? And I do not want to mess with that. But if I just can, can write them in parametric, now everything's built off of t directly. And that makes everything so much easier. This is easy, at least to set up. Now, you got a radical inside of an integral, which always could lead to horrible things, right? So I'm not going to guarantee anything there. But still, definitely makes it possible to at least set it up. Um, OK. I just want to mention that. It's not going to be a huge part of what we do, but that's a nifty little thing. So let me give you this. Actually, let me ask you guys how much you remember about this. And this will be the last thing we talk about today. Not ever. Oh, gosh. Now, please, I don't understand your hate. So does anybody remember the idea of polar coordinates? So if I have a point... Uh, it's radius. If I have a point two two in rectangular coordinates. So somebody so the the, the the urban legend is that Descartes was had a fever, he was staring at a ceiling. Have I told you this story? No. No. Really? Okay. Wow. All right. So Descartes supposedly had a fever, he was in his room staring at a ceiling, and he was watching a fly walking and he says, I can model a fly's location using the XY and that's a Supposedly, that's where he came up with the XY. That's why we call it the Cartesian coordinate system after Descartes. So nobody's really certain about that story, but there's a lot of urban legends in math that would not make for a good horror movie. So <laughs> that just does not happen. So we have this representation, but there's no reason that that had to come first or anything. That's just one way to represent the position of a point. Now, I like this earlier, I was talking with somebody in my office, and if I'm in a boat, a much better coordinate system, I know we have latitude, longitude, which is, which is X, Y, but if I'm on the boat and I want to get somewhere, do I want somebody to tell me X, Y necessarily, or do I just want them to tell me, face this way and go this far? I'd much rather them say, face this way and go this far. It's much easier, right? Right. Are you with me? I can, I can use both simultaneously. Something is at this latitude, longitude, x, y. But how do I get there? Face this way and go this far. Oh, that's much better. Thank you. So that would be face this way. What way would that be? That's defined by the angle. The angle would be what in this case specifically? Pi over 4. Pi over 4. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. And then how far would I go out? 2. Oh, no. If you go two out, you're not going to get to them. They're going to die. It's going to hang on you. Man. I don't know. Four. Four. 
Yeah, I mean, how do you get that? Isn't it just square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared? Come on. Square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared. Square root of 8. So 2 rad 2. So r theta, that's polar coordinates. That's all polar coordinates is. Or r, whatever the correct grammar is. I don't even know. All right, how are we doing there? So I, I personally don't understand, I'm not belittling you if, you if you don't like it or if you had a lot of trouble with it, but it only makes sense. I want another option. And again, from earlier, there are problems that are easier to do in polar coordinates. So thank God we invented polar coordinates, so I have that option, right? So all these different coordinate systems, they're just options for doing my problem in them. I can convert my problem into this coordinate system, and I'm like, oh, cool, that's easy, and then I convert it back. That kicks ass. Of course I'm going to do that if I can, if it helps me. So, so real quick, what are the little, how did I figure out R? Square root of yeah, square root of x squared plus y squared, right? And how do we figure out theta? I mean, theta was easy to figure out because I just could see it's pi over 4. But what if I was at a point, um, so r is the same always, I just take x and y, but what if I was at the point 2, 9? How would you figure out this angle? Uh, Be more specific. So you will use trig, you will use inverse tangent, kick x, because they know the y and the x, right? So theta would be inverse tangent of y over x. Does this sound at all familiar? I mean, these are the conversions. Why are they conversions? Because it's, it's what freaking makes sense. It's what I would do. They're not set in stone. They're just what the hell I would do to find an angle and find how far I want to go. Right? How would you get 4 over x? Y over x. Oh, okay. I need to figure out how to make my y. I can do that as I learn how to say water. Huh? Make it curl. Make it curl? I don't know. Do a tail. <laughs> oh, like that or something? Yeah. Looks like an L. I don't know. <laughs> so way I, the way I write, I don't think there's any way for me to do it. Alright. Say one more time. This is 10 3. So 10 1 was parametric, 10 2 is calculus with parametric, 10 3 is polar. What's 10 4 going to be? No way. Mm -hmm. That would have made sense. They should have done that. Oh, yeah, they did. They we do participate. Um, now, real quick, real quick. If I give you r theta, so if I tell you the point is at, uh, everything's in the first spot, it's too bad. 7 and pi over 3. All right, so this is polar currently. How do you convert that back to rectangular? It's almost too easy. Uh, you take r sine theta, yeah. or y, and then y will be r sine theta, and, and x will be r cosine, cosine theta, theta, which is the definitions of sine and cosine. Right. So it would be 7 cosine pi over 3, that would be x. y is 7 sine pi over 3. That's and what's cosine of pi over 3? Yes. 60 degrees, it's far away from X. Cosine doesn't like it, it's time. Wow, that was a weird way to explain But that's the way you look at it. The closer I am to the X axis, the bigger cosine gets because cosine likes X. The closer I am to the Y axis, the bigger sine gets because sine likes Y. It's talking why it likes Y. The closer I am to the Y axis, the bigger sine gets. So root 3 over 2. Yeah. Because I hate memorizing shit, so I always come up with something that just connects everything together, so I don't memorize everything. Um, all right, so I want you guys to do this. You should be able to do this whole. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Should be a review, depending on your path here. The exact same handout I gave my 176 students. Would it be section number? Yeah. Actually. Yeah. 
So do that whole thing. Do it. Do what you can. And then we'll talk about what we weren't able to do.